Hey, this is Bill Pesco Salito, and in today's video, I want to talk about what I feel are uh, is the, really the most effective way to set up a three-way call with your sponsor or your upline. Now, first of all, I think three-way calls are very effective. Uh, I think they're very important. Personally, I place a very high priority uh, priority on three-way calls. Um, I just think that they're they're great for a lot of reasons. So, here's what I want. Uh, to talk about today. And before I talk about what I think are the most effective ways to set up a three-way call, I'm going to kind of share with you what I, what are some maybe ineffective ways and, and kind of share with you what I would not recommend or what a three-way is not meant for. So for example, um, if, you, if you send someone to see your company's presentation and you haven't even then followed up with them on your own, and you haven't even then qualified them or, or gauged their interest or even confirmed that they've, they've watched the presentation, that they're still interested, don't set up a three-way call. Don't, don't skip that step, right? A three-way call is not meant for um, your upline or sponsor or mentor to do all the work for you and all the selling and convincing and all that kind of stuff, especially if it's a not very interested candidate, right? That's not what your upline is there for. You know, I think a three-way call is meant for when there's a very interested person um, and there's still maybe a couple of questions to be answered. There's still some closing that needs to be done, but they're, they've watched the presentation. You've confirmed it. You've been able to gauge their interest. You know, on a scale of one out of 10, they're at least, I'd say, a six, you know, hopefully a seven, eight, or nine out of 10, right? And so there, there's interest there. I mean, there's a real reason for then the, the call and, and you've actually again, confirm that they've watched it, ask them some questions, ask them what they liked most about what they saw. You kind of gone through these steps. And in other training, you know, I go through how to really qualify a prospect. Well, don't want to get down that road now. So, so that's kind of my views on, on the purpose of the three-way. You know, what it's not for, it's not meant for your upline to do all the heavy lifting and, you know, you know make this person, you know, convince the person. Um, it's, it's meant for a, a hot prospect that just has a few questions left before they move forward. So uh, here's also what I would recommend that you don't do as far as a question to set your three-way call up. Uh, a question that you don't want to say is, hey, is it okay if I set up a three-way call with my upline? You know, if you're saying, hey, is it okay if, or if you have that kind of just timidness, um, th their, their response, they'll, they'll probably maybe, uh, maybe just smell some weakness or, or might just think, think it's, I don't know, off. Um, but if you say, hey, is it okay if I set up a three-way call, they, you're giving them the answer or you're giving them the choice to say yes or no. Sure, it's okay or no, it's not okay. Right? So how I proceed and how I think the best way to do it is to do something like this. So, Because uh, maybe they've got a few questions now that you can't answer or you're at a point where you would like some additional help uh, to close. So I would say to the prospect, okay, so here's how we're going to get your questions answered. I'm going, to set, I'm going to arrange a three-way call with my partner, Bill, and, and, and he'll be able to answer your, your last few questions. All right? Here's the deal, though. Bill is super busy. Right? Uh, you know, he's one of the top leaders in the company. You know, we've got a large team here. He's constantly working. Um, he's really busy. So why don't I get a, a couple times from you, maybe two or three times for you, that you know you'd be able to commit to. I'll check to see if any of those times work for Bill, and then I'll get back with you to confirm which of those times work best for him. All right, so did you see what I did there? Um, instead of asking permission if we could move forward to set up a three-way call, I said, so here's how we're going to get your questions answered. Right? I'm basically guiding them along, explaining to them, sharing with them, here's the process. You know, here's what's going to happen next. Not asking, but just assuming that they're going to say, oh, okay, yeah, and just, just moving forward. So here's what's going to happen next. Here's how we're going to get your questions answered. I'm going to reach out to Bill to see if he's, you know, when he might be available when you have a few minutes, but he's super busy. So I got to check with him first. And then once I do, I'll get back with you and let you know. Okay. So, you know, what are two or three times that work for you? Oh, Tuesday at six, seven, and eight. Okay, cool. Let me get with Bill real quick, see if that works for him, and then I'll get back in touch with you. So then you reach out to me or reach out to your upline sponsor, whoever it is, Say, hey, does these times work? And they'll say, yes, boom. Then, here's what's crucial as well. You then don't email, don't text message, call. You gotta call this person back, because here's what's important. Call them back. Hey, good news. 
I was able to connect with Bill, and here's what he said. He can meet with you for 15 minutes at, you know, Tuesday at 6. All right? So Tuesday at 6 o'clock, you know, I'll call you then. Sound good? Awesome. Great. So you have literally, so you started the positioning of, you positioned it well, that, that Bill's a super busy guy, but we'll get your questions answered. Um, you, you've started a bit of that edification process, and which you'll do more of once the three-way call starts, right? Um, and you've also, you've pinned them down to a firm time, and you've established that, look, we're, we're busy people, we're, we're, we're business people, we're serious about this, but we're willing to work with your schedule, but we're serious about this. So here's the time that's going to be. Obviously, they told you earlier that time would work, and you've now confirmed it. So this really leaves no uh, room for, for interpretation, right? They know that the reason why it's Tuesday at 6 is because the person that's going to be able to answer their questions is super busy, but they're giving you 15 minutes at Tuesday at 6, and not at 6.30, not at 6.15, at Tuesday at 6 o'clock in this particular case. And because Bill's so busy, because he has 15 minutes, I'm going to call you at 6 and we'll get your questions answered. That's what's going to increase the odds Then they actually answer because they know, crap, this guy gave me 15 minutes. You know, he, he's super busy. He's a leader in the company. And, and so when they call at 6, I, I better pick up. So that, in my opinion, is the best way to set a three-way call. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, if you got a hot prospect on the line right now, get just, you know, conference your three-way person in, conference your sponsor right away because you got a hot one, right? And you don't want to let them slip away, you know, strike while the iron's hot and all that good stuff. And um, I understand that logic. Um, I just personally disagree with it, and that's just me. And, and here's why. I think that if if you were on a phone with the prospect and you immediately felt, oh, I got a you know conference, you know, a three-way call, my, my upline and sponsor in, and that person were to take the call, what that does in my mind is signifies that your upline and sponsor really isn't that busy and they're willing to drop everything just to take this call now with a potential prospect. Um, I feel that that works against the posture of this and I feel it works against the edification because if I'm so if I'm if I'm your upline right if I'm your sponsor and I'm so busy and I'm such a leader in the company and I'm all this that in, in the way you would edify the person properly why would I just drop everything right there in the middle of the day randomly just to take this call and, and hop in a three-way call so I prefer because if there's real interest if there's real legitimate interest that this person has we can do the three-way call in another couple hours or, or later on this evening or tomorrow afternoon, right? I'm not suggesting that you, you string out this process between this moment and when the three-way occurs. I don't recommend you string that out over like three or four days or a week later. No, I still feel you do it that same day or that same evening or the very next day. But I think if, if all of a sudden you do it immediately, it, it kind of reeks of desperation. Um, if all of a sudden... You just conference me in and boom, I'm on the phone like, yeah, yeah, I can talk. Sure, I'll do anything for a prospect. I got nothing else going on. You know, I'm just sitting around waiting. You know, It just seems desperate and, 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 and less professional. You know, I prefer to do it the way I suggested because it seems more professional. Just like you wouldn't just show up at your doctor's office and be like, hey, I'm here. I need to get checked out. Hey, check me out. They'd be like, well, did you set an appointment? And you'd say, no, no, I'm just popping in. I figured he's not doing anything right. It doesn't really work that way. You call, you set an appointment, you schedule it when it works for you, when it works for them, when it works for everyone involved. That's how you do it. And I feel you do the same with this, right? You're scheduling an appointment. We're professionals. You know, we're not just Mickey Mouse, you know, you know, hobbyists who, hey, I kind of do this a little bit here and there, and yeah, whatever. Blah, blah. No, we're serious. We're professionals, right? And and for me, for three way, you got to schedule it uh, like an, an, as an appointment, like you would with the doctor. And I feel that, that helps to create that tone with the prospect, like, whoa, I had to schedule this with this guy. Wow, okay. So those are my thoughts on that. So, um, gosh, where am I? So, I, I mean, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm sure it does. And uh, just remember, maintain your posture. You know, don't ask, eh, can we set up a three-way? Because I don't know the answer. Instead, so here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to reach out to my partner. Because um, he'll be able to answer all these. These are good questions, by the way. We want to get your questions answered. He'll be the, able to, the, one, the one that can answer your questions. Um, but i got to see when he's available first because, look, he's, a, he's an emerald in the company. I mean, he's super busy. I mean, he's just a leader within the industry. Whatever you're going to edify your, your upline with, edify. 
uh, create that whole time sensitivity. You know, he's got 15 minutes, so I'm going to call you right at 6. Remember all these things because that's setting the tone and the posture. It's very important for the three-way call success. So I hope you like this video. Uh, if you do, you know, comment below, share it, like it, tweet it, Twitter it, uh, whatever it, social media, you know, share. And this is Bill Pesco Salito, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.